Alrighty, and welcome to our final tutorial for our conics chapter. This objective today, we will be solving nonlinear systems of equations by substitution and elimination. Before we begin with our nonlinear systems, I'd like to take a quick review of some prerequisite material that you should know from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. This is a linear system. This is just a line, and this is just another line. I'd like to review our solving systems by elimination and substitution. So I'm going to solve this system both ways. I'll first start with elimination. Elimination tends to be my favorite. Um, I don't know. It just makes more sense to me. Sometimes we can only substitute. Of course, I will substitute in those cases, but I like to eliminate. Um, elimination, it's best when you have your um, like terms kind of lined up. I've got my x terms here and my y terms here, the equal sign, and then my constants over here. So this looks like it's already set up for elimination. Okay. Um, I, what I need to do is eliminate one of the variables. Now, I could choose to eliminate the x's. Um, all I need is opposite terms. They're, they're so close. I've got a positive 2x and a negative 4x. If this just happened to be a positive 4x, then positive 4x and negative 4x would eliminate. So I could multiply this term by 2, and therefore everything in this equation by 2. I could also try to eliminate the y's by uh, multiplying by a negative 6 to this term, which means I would need to multiply by negative 6 to every term. I could choose whichever one. I'm going to actually choose to multiply by 2, so I can eliminate the x's in this case. So I'm going to show that I'm multiplying each of these two things, each of these three terms in my equation by 2. And I'm going to um, come off to the side and show what that would turn into. This would be 4x plus 2y is now equal to 10. The bottom equation I have not changed. It's still negative 4x plus 6y equals to negative 2. So in one step, I've already gotten my terms to be opposites, my x terms. So when I add these two equations together, these two terms will eliminate. I'll have 8y is equal to 8, 10 minus 2. And therefore, y is equal to 1. So I already have half of my answer. When I have half of my answer, then I'm going to plug that number into either one of the original equations. Honestly, whichever one, it makes more sense for you to do. Um, I think mathematically it's going to be a little bit easier to plug a 1 into this top equation, into the original top equation. So I had 2x plus y equal to 5. That's what I originally had. But now the y is equal to 1, so I've got 2x plus 1 is equal to 5. And when I solve for this, if I subtract 1 and then divide by 2, I get x is 2. So together, my two values, 2 for x and 1 for y, come together to make the ordered pair 2, 1. This is elimination. And like I said, I, I tend to use elimination more often than um, substitution or graphing, or matrices for that matter. So that's elimination. Let's solve the same exact system using substitution. So let's first rewrite the system here. I've got 2x plus y equal to 5, and negative 4x plus 6y is equal to negative 2. Substitution is a method that would require us to substitute for one of these four variables, either the top x or the top y, or the bottom x or the bottom y. I choose to substitute for this top y, because if I wanted to solve for any one of the other three, I would need to divide by that coefficient. And I don't particularly want to divide by a coefficient, because it most likely will um, make me have to deal with fractions. I'm not afraid of fractions of course, but if I don't have to deal with them, I wouldn't want to. So I'm going to solve for this y. So I'm going to come over here and rewrite this equation. Solving for y is pretty simple. I would just subtract 2x. So I'm going to have y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So we've substituted for that y. The whole idea behind substitution is if y is equal to this, in this top equation, then in the bottom equation, it would have to be equal to the same exact thing. So I'm going to take this binomial expression, this negative 2x plus 5, and I'm going to replace it for this y. That's what a substitution is, replacing for an equivalent um, 
um, expression. So negative 4x, and then a plus sign, and then a 6, and then y has a new name. It's this entire binomial, negative 2x plus 5. I've substituted that right on in for that, and then my equal sign, my negative sign, and my 2. So what I've done here is I've substituted, and now I only have one variable remaining. So this should be just a simple little equation that we can solve. I'll go ahead and distribute negative 4x, and then I've got negative 12x, and then plus 30 is all equal to negative 2. I'll get my like terms together to make negative 16x. Maybe at the same time, I'll subtract 30. And I've got negative 32 over here. When I divide by x, excuse me, when I divide by negative 16, I'm going to get that x is equal to 2, which we already knew, of course. We solved that over here. But this is another way to find that x is 2. So I have half of my answer. I'm looking for the other half. And if I'm looking for the other half, then I'm going to take this 2 and substitute it. This time, I always go right into the original thing that I um, circled. I had that y was equal to negative 2x plus 5, but now that I know that uh, x is 2, that can come right in place there, and so it's negative 2 times 2 plus 5. So this is equal to negative 4 plus 5, which we all know is equal to 1. And once I know that y is 1, I know that that's the other part of my answer, and of course, it's the same as what I just solved by elimination. So this is a method called substitution. So sometimes we'll use elimination today. Sometimes we'll use substitution today. Sometimes we'll do a hybrid of, uh, I don't know, elimination or something. <laughs> because we'll be using elimination and substitution at the same time. Okay, one more prerequisite problem before we begin our nonlinear systems. I want to make sure we are all on board with being able to solve this equation. This is a quadratic equation because it is an x squared, it has an x squared term. Um, we know many methods to solving a quadratic equation. I'm going to choose to factor. We could graph, we could do completing the square, we could do quadratic formula, but if it's going to uh, factor, I'm going to choose to factor. All four of those methods that I just mentioned require the same first step. We need this equation to be equal to zero. I like my quadratic term to stay positive, which is why I'm going to add 7x to this side, to, to this side and I'm going to subtract 6 to that side. I'm basically going to bring all of this stuff to the left side of the equation so that the quadratic term remains positive. I'm going to put them in a nice form the quadratic term, then the linear term, then the constant, and since there's nothing on the right side now, it's all set equal to zero. So we are ready to factor. I always look for a little GCF, but I don't see a greatest common factor in this case. So I'm just gonna go straight into my trial and error. There is one option to multiply to get my first term, and that is 3x times 1x. That's the only option there. My last terms have a couple options. I've got one times six, I've got two times three. Okay. I know that if this is indeed going to factor, it's going to factor into two sets of binomials multiplied together, of course still equal to zero. Please do not drop the equation. So since I know that the fronts of the parentheses will be 3x and 1x, since that's the only option, I'll go ahead and put those in. I now need to choose if it's going to be a 1 and a 6 in the back of the parentheses or if it's going to be a 2 and a 3. Now, some people might say, well, wait a minute, doesn't it have to be 1 and 6 because 1 and 6 make the 7? Well, that may be true, but because of this 3 right here, that most likely will not be true. I'm actually going to choose the 2 and the 3, but I'm even more intelligent than that. If I'm going to do the 2 and the 3, I know that the 3 cannot go in this first parenthesis because there already is a 3. And if I put another 3 with it, then I'm giving a GCF. And since there is not a GCF from the beginning, there cannot be a GCF in the middle. So if I'm going to choose the 2 and the 3, I'm going to change the color just to show that this truly is a guess. I'm going to put the 2 here and the 3 here. Okay. Now, I might need to get up my eraser because this might be uh, an error because I call it trial and error. The last thing I need to know is that I am ultimately multiplying to get a negative. So one of them needs to be positive and one of them needs to be negative. I don't know which one, so I'm just going to go ahead and put in a plus and a minus and let's just see where we are. 
That's just a guess. I need to check my inner terms multiply to give 2x, my outer terms multiply to give negative 9x, and when I check that, that adds up to negative 7x. Okay, negative 7x is so close to what I needed in the middle, it's just the wrong sign. So that means since the number is correct, keep the numbers everywhere where they are. Since the sign is incorrect, I'm going to get out my eraser and I'm going to switch my signs. So it was not plus minus, it must have been minus and then plus. So now when I check, I've got negative 2x in the middle, and I've got positive 9x on the outside. That adds up to positive 7x, which is what I needed. And there I have fact oops, I factored it, but I haven't solved it yet. So I factored my um, quadratic here. Now I know that 3x minus 2 could be equal to 0, so therefore x could be 2 thirds. Hopefully you've learned the trick to make that pretty fast. Basically it's the opposite sign, and then it's this number divided by this number, because that's what you do. You add 2, and then you divide by 3. And this factor, x plus 3, could be equal to 0, so that means, of course, that x could equal negative 3. And those are our two solutions to this. Okay, so we need to be sure that we can substitute and eliminate, and we need to be able to solve a quadratic equation. Those are the prerequisite skills for this lesson. Here's our first nonlinear system. Actually, I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to call this first tutorial the prerequisite tutorial. Okay, thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.